let's go and explore all the different ways that we can graph a line. Now we're gonna be graphing a line on what we call the Cartesian coordinate grid. In that case, we're gonna have a y-axis as well as an x-axis. Now I'm assuming that you have a basic idea of how these number lines are kind of orientated, right? We have the x-axis going along horizontally. We have the positive direction going to the right, negative direction going to the left. And then the y-axis is basically just the exact same number line, but flipped vertically, where going up is going to be positive, and going down is going to be negative. So when we're first learning how to graph a line, one of the first things that we learn how to do is use point slope form. And what we're gonna simply do is go ahead and identify where the point is on the coordinate grid, and then we're gonna use the slope to find our next point. Now, a lot of times slope gets confusing when we have a negative, because if you write the negative like most textbooks, it's not gonna be in the numerator or it's not gonna be in the denominator. But guess what? it doesn't matter where it's at. Now, when we're graphing a line, all we need is two points. But for the sake of this video and for this instruction, I'm gonna go ahead and find at least a couple points, especially at least for the first two. First thing you wanna do is be able to identify the point. Where exactly does that land? Because if you don't know how to graph a single point, then you might need to check out another video or just make sure you can practice and understand that. So we label our points as an X and a Y coordinate. So the first number tells you where to go on the x-axis. So therefore we have a positive one, so I'm gonna go one unit to the right. The y-coordinate is gonna tell you where you're going on the y-axis. Since that's a negative one, I'm gonna go down one unit. Now, one thing that we're doing is we're creating one single point. So you don't go plot a point here and then plot a point on each axis, right? Because that'd be two points. So what you need to do when you're plotting a point is you need to take into consideration the x and the y-coordinate together. So I'm gonna go over one unit on the x and then down one unit on the y. That is going to be my point. All right, so we got one point. Now we need to find at least another point to be able to create our line. So then we look to our slope. Now, here's the big thing that I always tell my students. If you have a negative two over three, that is the same thing as a negative two divided by three, which is the exact same thing as a positive two divided by a negative three. But it is not the same thing as a negative two over a negative three. And just use simple numbers. Like think of this instead of two thirds, let's think about is as an eight over four, right? So if I say negative eight over four, we know that answer is negative two. If I said negative eight divided by two, that's negative four. If I said positive eight divided by negative two, that's negative four. However, negative eight divided by negative two, that is equal to a positive four, right? Because the negatives are going to divide out. So work this way, or make sure you can use either one of these options, doesn't really matter. Now the difference between these two is how we understand what our slope is. The slope is gonna be the relationship between any two points on our coordinate grid. It's basically telling you how to navigate from one point to the next. So a lot of students remember this as like the rise over the run, or the change in the Y over the change in the X. However your instructor, or however it makes sense to you, that's perfectly fine. I like to use like the change in the Y coordinates over the change in the X coordinates. So what that means is, let's go and look at this example first. So when you have a point slope form, you're always gonna start from the point that you have. So here's our point, this is our starting point. So let's go and use this example first. It's saying the change in the Y coordinates between any two points on our graph is going to be negative two. Well again, what does the negative two for our change in our Y? That means we're gonna be going down, right? Because on the Y axis, if up is positive, down is negative. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down two units. Now, you don't have to create this slope triangle, but I think when you're first learning, I always like using and understanding this. So I'm gonna go down two units from my initial point. Then the change in the X coordinates, or what we call the run, is going to be a positive three. So what that means is on the X coordinate, positive means to the right. So now I'm going to go over from the slope triangle, one, two, three. That is going to be my next point. I don't know why I did different colors. That's gonna be, where's my red? There we go positive three. So you can see from one point to the next, negative two over three, and now I can go ahead and connect my line going to the right-hand side. Now you can continue this line going to the left, but yes, let's use the next definition. The next definition says the change in the rise or run is positive two, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up two, and then it says the change in the run or the change in the x-coordinates is gonna be negative three. So let's go to the left three. One, two, three. And that'd be my next point over there, which is right here. And if I wanted to connect, what do you know? It follows this exact same line. And again, you can continue this pattern, right? You can continue the slope triangle if you need, but you only need, ladies and gentlemen, two points to be able to create a line. I just wanted to go a little bit extra to help you out with that. 
Now let's get into slope intercept. Now slope intercept is a preferred method for graphing, especially when you have a line that's already in slope intercept form. Slope intercept form is basically y equals a mx plus b, where b represents your y intercept. That is going to be where the graph crosses the y axis. And m is going to represent your slope, which is your change in your rise over your run. So let's go ahead and set up our x and y axis here. And let's go ahead and get started with graphing on this one. Now, the difference is here's the point, right? They gave you a point here and you plotted them on the XY grid. The reason why this one's important is because two represents that Y intercept, which technically is really just saying our point is going to be a zero comma two, right? If it lies on the Y axis, then we know that the X value is going to be zero and the Y value is going to be a two. So now I'm just gonna go up to this point, zero on my Y axis, there's my X axis, and I'm just gonna go to two. Now I'm gonna go ahead and follow my slope. Now, a lot of students get confused with slope intercept because they're negative. They don't know it should go in the top or the bottom. They get it confused and they put in both or whatever, and they just make a mistake. The next way you can make a mistake using slope is when you just have an integer. Remember guys, the integer can always be rewritten over one, right? Because anything divided by one is just anything, whatever it originally was. So if I want to find the slope, I can see the change in the y or the rise is going to be three. So I can go up three units, one, two, three. And then my change in my run is going to be a positive one. So it's going to be three over to the one. Therefore, that is going to be in the positive direction. And then I know, just like we did over here, guys, remember, three over one is the same thing as a negative three over negative one. Right? So I could go in that positive direction, but if I wanted to find a point in the negative direction, I would just go down three, one, two, three, and to the left one. And voila, that is how you apply with slope intercept form. Now the last one is one that I don't love to use all the time, but there is definitely times that we want to be able to use the intercept method. And especially when you have an equation that is in what we call our standard form, which is ax plus by is equal to c. And you could obviously take it in standard form and rewrite it in slope intercept form and then graph it in this way. Completely a useful strategy to be able to graph a line. However, when you notice that the coefficients of a and b evenly divide into your c, sometimes if you just need to identify like the orientation of the graph or where the intercepts are, intercept method is very, very important. So how can we understand or use the intercept method? Well, the important thing is understanding what exactly are the intercepts. Remember, slope intercept form says when this value two, that was the intercept. What did we know about the point? The x value was zero, the y value was two. So if I wanna find the y intercept, one thing I know about the y intercept is that point lies on my y axis and also my x value is going to be zero. So to find the y intercept, just replace x with zero. So I'm getting a little lost on space, but y is going to equal four. So I know that coordinate point here is going to be a zero comma four. So let's go to here. And then if the y intercept is when x is equal to zero, well, what do you think the x intercept is gonna be? The x intercept, you guessed it, is going to be when y is equal to zero. So now I can just go and plot that point on the x-axis. 